Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. Oh, man, when you hear the voice of John Lindquist, you know what that means. It's time for a little Hokamania. You know what? If, if, if Jim Cornette can call his gang the cult of Cornette, I can say I've got Hokamaniacs. That's how it goes out there. Thanks for listening, everybody. We do appreciate it. Oh, my God. What a weekend we've had. There's another one coming up here in Las Vegas. It is the, oh, man, pro wrestling has just taken over this city. Good Lord. And I know Joe DeFalco, my good friend at FSW, has got his 15th anniversary show coming up, too. I want to check out FSW Vegas. Everything he's got going on, big show coming up. But, of course, NXT Battleground invades Las Vegas coming up next Sunday. That's going to be exciting, and boy, did it pick up there. Holy cow, did you see NXT on Tuesday? As Jordan Grace, the TNA Knockouts champion, walked in the door and is challenging Roxanne Perez. He's going to face off with the women's NXT champion. You don't get to see those champion versus champion matches very much when you have promotions crossover. This is going to be something very special. And apparently Jordan Grace on this whole thing with WWE, she's getting paid. Good for her. I saw Jonathan Gresham put up a tweet. Of course, that's her husband. That uh, They remember they were living in a little tiny place in York, Pennsylvania. That's my old stomping grounds. Of course, they, uh, Jonathan was in Ring of Honor. And, uh, you know, thinking back to those days and, this is just, I'm so happy for those guys. But NXT Battleground is going to be an amazing night. And, of course, Ethan Page made his debut on NXT, jumping on Trick Williams, the NXT champ. And, uh, of course, that's going to be over at the Apex Center. I just took a look. There are still some tickets available. But we have something special for you today in honor of that. Well, the man running NXT, Shawn Michaels. I got to sit down with him, and we're going to hear from him in our next segment on the show. And I got to tell you, what a what an honor to get to talk to the heartbreak kid. He's not so much a kid anymore, but, you know, a thrill for me to get to talk to Shawn Michaels and get to bring that to all of you here on the Mark Hoke Show. So brace yourself. We're going to get to hear from Shawn Michaels. Coming up here in just a little bit, the two-time WWE Hall of Famer joined us here on the Mark Hoke Show. Later on in the show, uh, we're also going to be hearing from my good buddy, Stu Myrick. He's going to be joining us from, from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. He's going to hop in here in hour number two. He'll be talking to us about, well, whatever's been going on, AEW, of course, uh, Double or Nothing happening here in Las Vegas last weekend. We're going to review that card. What a night that was. A lot of good and oh, some bad news for AEW as another major injury takes place here in Las Vegas. I was sitting there face up, saw that, man, right on the ring line. Oh, tough to watch. But we'll get into that uh, as we go through the show. A lot of WWE news, a lot of AEW news. But, man, I'll tell you what, a a big night coming up here in Las Vegas. So you can go get those tickets right now. Like I said, I just looked. There's not many left. So you want to go over. It's going to be a very special night. Of course, the Apex Center is literally just down the street from us. You just I just kind of hop over the 215 and one exit down, and you're at the WWE Apex Center from the Aussie Studios. And we're going to be very excited to uh, be helping out here with NXT Battleground. And that card, 
if you don't know what's going on over there with that one, it, it's going to be a pretty amazing night uh, just to run that down for you if you haven't taken a look. Of course, and for those of you that may not be familiar with NXT and you just kind of you know check out all the big WWE cards, well, NXT is WWE's develop, develop, developmental show. Maybe I need to develop. <laughs> I can't even say it. Maybe I need to develop my speaking abilities. Good Lord. I even got sleep last night. It's terrible. Uh, here's the current card for that. Uh, NXT has a new championship. They are adding a women's North American championship. So they're going to have a secondary women's championship they're introducing on this card. It is a ladder match for that title. Sol Rocka, Lash Legend, Fallon Henry, Henley, uh, Jada Parker, Aunt Mishan, and Kehlani Jordan will be battling it out in a ladder match for that title. So that should be something, to say the least. Uh, Oba Femi will be defending the Men's North American Championship against Wesley and Joe Coffey. Look out. And if you have not seen Oba Femi, what a monster this man is. He is incredible. They had a battle of the Giants at Stand and Deliver that he managed to outlast uh, Dijak and uh, man, just a great match. An NXT underground match, so that's more like a, a mixed MMA style match. So you, you know they're you know, they're going to be locking up at Shayna Baszler against Lola Vice, two former MMA fighters. So that should be something incredible to watch. And then of course we got the Roxanne Perez Jordan Grace match uh, for the NXT Women's Championship as Jordan's going to be challenging her. Of course, Jordan Grace, like we said, is the current TNA Knockouts champion, and you know, and, and I'll get into that in a sec. Uh, just how huge that match is. Uh, there's going to be a tag team match for the NXT tag titles as Nathan Frazier and Axiom will defend against the OC. So Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson are going to be stepping in there and challenging for the NXT tag titles. So pretty impressive. But back to that, this cross promotional match. And we'll be talking more about what's going on here with WWE and TNA because they're still kind of working on this relationship a little bit. But these matches where you cross over promotions are very very rare and especially in the modern era, they just well they don't happen. And that's why one of the things that's going to make this night so special and doing it here in Las Vegas, you know, we see it at boxing all the time, but, you know, we all know it's boxing. I mean, you know, it, those different federations, it doesn't mean a whole lot. But this does. Because when you think back, you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, you know, very young, Bob Backlund and Harley Race wrestled when Backlund was the uh, WWF champion and race was the NWA champion. And then I remember uh, you had Rick Martell when he was the AWA champion taking on Ric Flair when he was the NWA champion, that match happened. And you also, now you did have Kurt Henning and uh, Jerry Lawler going at it uh, when Kurt was the AWA champion. And then Jerry was the USWA champion uh, as mid South had kind of started to evolve and they, they had the US the, you know, the merger with world class and all that, but you know, that was kind of more planned than anything else as those organizations are kind of starting to pull together. But this, these crossover matches are just so, so rare. And for you guys to get a chance to see this right here in Las Vegas, I'm telling you, it is something that it's such a rarity in pro wrestling. And if you, if you have the chance to go down, like I said, I, I think, when I looked, I don't. Did I leave? Let me see if I left the ticket map up. Uh, there were a couple on the one side. Looks like there's four on one side, and let me slide down the map here. And then the one section looks like they opened up, and I'm counting. Oh, uh, there's one, two, two rows there, and half a row of another. So maybe there's about forty or fifty seats left at this place, and it's a small venue. So there's not many chances for you to to get in there. I would oh, there's one little dot over there too, but near ringside. Um, I would suggest it, get on there right now, and and it would certainly press WWE if you, know, you said, hey, you know what, Mark Oak said to go get a ticket. So, you know, do it. 
I mean, if you mention that on, on X, that would be great too. But go to this card. And it's and and this is obviously part of the merger between WWE and UFC under the TKO banner that they're doing this at the Apex. I mean, what a what a historic night it's gonna be. Not just for WWE, but with working with UFC to do this. I mean, I'm telling you guys, you are going to be in for a spectacular, spectacular night for NXT. So recommend checking this out. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, get over there, man. Get over there. And and this card's not done. Obviously, with Ethan, Ethan Page jumping on Trick Williams. Hey, could we be seeing Ethan Page debuting and challenging for the NXT title? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. But I'm not gonna. You're not gonna do this. You're not doing this card without Trick Williams on it. Are you kidding me? So there's more to come on this card. Should be pretty exciting. And I tell you what, we're gonna do is we're gonna step back and we're gonna take our first break of the show. And when we come back, what can I say? I I. I want to thank WWE for the opportunity to get a chance to sit down, even if it was for just for a little while, with the legend. I mean, just one of the greats of all time. And uh, and some people say he is the greatest wrestler to ever set foot in a ring. Shawn Michaels joining us on the Mark Oak Show. So everybody, stick around. We'll come back. And we're going to hear from the Heartbreak Kid, Sean Michaels, on the Mark Hoke Show. So we thank you for joining us. A whole lot more coming up. And, of course, we got a whole show to go, too. We're going to be talking about everything with Double or Nothing and a whole lot of other news and pro wrestling. So stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. One oh one five FM K Don. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, let's get back to it. The best pro wrestling news and entertainment here on the Mark Hoke Show on K Dawn, 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. Also, those of you out there listening to us on the Odyssey app, well, God bless you. And if you haven't downloaded that Odyssey app, what are you doing? That app's amazing, man. You can listen to shows, not just mine, but you know shows like Sports X Radio that I produce here on KDON, and of course a ton of great shows from everywhere in the Odyssey universe, literally. So download that app, get it on your phone, and you're going to find a world of entertainment there. So get that right now. We'd certainly appreciate it. And those of you checking out the live stream on YouTube, we'd certainly appreciate that as well, and on Facebook. And before I get into our interview with Shawn Michaels, I wanted to mention there's a really cool event coming up here in Las Vegas, uh, Wrestle Connects. This is going to be uh, Wrestling's Fandom and Convention Expo. This is going to be great, guys, and I'm going to be out there. Saturday, September 14th from 10 to 5, uh, you're going to have pro wrestling legends and superstars out there, autographs, merchandise, at the Tuscany Suites and Casino in Las Vegas. Of course, that's just off of the Strip. Uh, if you want to get more information, call 702-459-7529. You can get booths, uh, you know, so if you want to set up down there, you can hang out. Uh, you know, if you want to sell any merchandise you might have or just want to learn more about it, or you can get information at shows at powerplaysportscards.com, uh, and it's Wrestle Connects, and that's uh, Wrestle, C-O-N-N-E-X, on Facebook and Instagram, so... Might want to just check that out. So once again, that is Wrestle Connects on Saturday, September 14th at the Tuscany. I know it's a long way out, but make your plans because I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a great, great, terrific, fantastical show. So get on over there at the Tuscany on September 14th. All right. So as promised, man, I'll tell you, I, I, Cannot begin to describe how excited I am to bring this to you and how much fun this was. As I got a chance to sit down with, well, he's the man. What can you say? Of course, he's running NXT and one of the all-time greats, two-time Hall of Famer. Let's hear from him right now. The Heartbreak Kid, 
Shawn Michaels. All right, everybody, and we are incredibly excited to welcome into the Mark Hoke Show. Well, he needs no introduction in the pro wrestling world, but I'm going to do it anyway. The two-time Hall of Famer, of course, he is the Senior Vice President of Talent Development and Creative for NXT as they're going to be heading to town. And actually, just across the street from us, down here at the Odyssey Studios, they're going to be at the UFC Apex for NXT Battleground coming up on June 9th on Sunday as we welcome in, well, he is still the sexy boy, Sean Michaels. <laughs> Yeah. Joining us here on the Mark Hoke Show, Sean. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing well. Little little hard to pull up, sexy boy these days, but I appreciate you throwing it out there for me anyway. No problem, sir. Well, I'll tell you what. We are all very excited. Another great event coming to Las Vegas. You now, of course, we're all excited about WrestleMania, but you guys taking the main stage, and of course, this new relationship with TKO. And, uh, you know, going to be seeing you down here at the UFC Apex, man, for Battleground. This is going to be an exciting night. Yeah, it really is. This is this is just huge for NXT, um, for us to, again, to be the first brand to, to get to be, I don't know, performing in that state-of-the-art facility of UFC Apex to really kind of just, I don't know, solidify, you know, that the, the merger and the relationship, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, UFC and obviously TKO and I don't know, the WWE, it's just really big for us here in NXT to, to be the guys that are having their first show in this amazing venue. Um, the men and women of NXT, very excited about coming out to Las Vegas uh, on June 9th. And, of course, getting the performer, you know, get to perform, you know, I don't know. In, it, look, in the entertainment capital of the world, right? I mean, what are we talking about? You know, Las Vegas, the, the future home of, of WrestleMania, Um and we're looking uh, forward to coming out there, putting on a fantastic event. Got a great show lined up for everybody. Um, and, again, just uh, very excited about uh, making our way out there next week. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, we're excited, too. And, boy, I'll tell you what, last night's show, you guys added a little more excitement to that, too, with Ethan Page showing up and Jordan Grace popping her head into the building. And she's going to be taking on Roxanne Perez Tell us a little bit about how that came about with Jordan Grace coming into the building again. Of course, she was at the Royal Rumble, but now this relationship with TNA, what's going on with that, Sean? Yeah, well, look, again, thankfully for me, I let people up in Stanford, people that are you know, much bigger positions than me, make bigger decisions than I do, handle all of that kind of stuff. I get to have the enjoyment part of the of the gig, and that is just trying to you know, make it exciting for, again, for our fans that watch, you know, NXT uh, every Tuesday night on the USA Network. And last night, again, it was a really, really big night. Felt historic. And that's what we want this, you know, uh, UFC Apex show battleground to be, to feel like it's a big historic event because that's what it is. Um, and the idea that NXT gets to be part of that groundbreaking relationship is really, like I said, I, I said it before and I can't, I can't overstate it. It's, it, it's huge for us. Um, and again, having the knockouts champion Jordan Grace from TNA come in uh, and challenge Roxanne Perez for the uh, for the NXT Women's Championship again is going to be huge. We'll find out next week uh, where Ethan Page uh, and his status stands with NXT because even all of that was kind of even I'm kind of out of the loop on on a couple of these things. So when we get all of these things ironed out, I'm sure we're going to have some uh, big big announcements coming down the pike. Um, but again. As far as June 9th is concerned, going to be crowning a new women's North American champion uh, in a ladder match, an underground match with Shannon Baszler and Lola Vice, two former cage fighters. So, again, a big, big night, uh, you know, in Las Vegas on June 9th. And, and again, still have one more week uh, to get us there and find out maybe what uh, Trick Williams is going to be doing with the NXT championship. So, again, as exciting as last night was, still got one more week uh you know, before battleground, battleground, and we'll see how it culminates uh, next week on USA. Well, I'm pretty excited about a couple things on this card too. With you know, of course, the new women's North American Championship. Yeah, you know, we don't even have a secondary women's championship on the main rosters. So now you get a secondary championship at NXT, and an opportunity to give the women an extra showcase down there. What brought that about? Well, again, I just. From my standpoint, and 
I always tell everybody, obviously I'm, I am biased and I would never, <laughs> I would never lie about that. But the depth of our women's division here in NXT is so unbelievable. And, and we, again, what I'm very proud of is we have so many storylines going with a multitude of not just our women, our men, we have them up and down our show, but our roster is so stacked, you know, for, on the female side, it just, it, it just seems like the right thing to do. And, and, and again, We've got a North American men's championship. I ought to have the North American women's on the other side. Um, and again, and this is certainly a division that can easily handle it. Um, so look, it was one of those things that you just, you see, again, the writing on the wall. And I don't know, I go back to myself as a wrestling fan, and that's all, I don't know, I, 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 I don't want to oversimplify it because it's not the easiest thing in the world coming up with, you know, a two hour, 52 week a year live wrestling show every week. But I know what I like as a fan. And I know that the NXT women's division is unbelievably stacked and they can easily uh, handle uh, a women's North American champion, uh, you know, title contender. So again, it was just something, a decision that needed to be made and we made it and looking forward to crowning that, you know, inaugural champion on June 9th in, in Las Vegas. And, of course, the underground match there, too, obviously with the tie-in with UFC. I think that's going to be a lot of fun to have that at the Apex Center, too. It absolutely is. And, you know, you see the atmosphere that we create here uh, in Orlando with those underground matches. And then to bring that out to Las Vegas is just going to be amazing. And it gets, you know, one of those things where all the sort of stars align and they come together. I really do. I feel like this is almost a WrestleMania-worthy kind of, you know, card that we've put together uh, for Battleground on June 9th. And again, uh, so proud that I was getting to, to get to be, you know, the ones that are bringing this uh, to all of you out there in Las Vegas. It's going to be a big night, going to be a fantastic night, and we're going to have a, a great deal of fun seeing you all in the next couple of weeks. Well, Sean, I'm just curious, with you and Triple H now pretty much in charge of creative of this whole thing, did you think that 30 years ago that the two of you were going to be sitting here? I mean, I've been a wrestling fan for 40 years. Yeah. I would have never bet this was going to happen. I mean, could you have pictured this back then? Look, no, well, look, I can. Obviously, there are times you're riding around in the car and we, you know, we would come up with ideas and we always enjoyed the creative process. And then, you know, over time, you get to take part in some of that creative process. But I, I can, and, and certainly I can't speak for Hunter because obviously his life changed when, you know, you know, he married his wonderful wife. But again, no, I, I, there's no way you could have told me at any point in my, <laughs> in my career or my life that we would be where we're at now. But I have to tell you, wouldn't change it for the world. It is so fun. Um, and, and I'll say this, it's, much like when I was doing the job and when he was doing it, we, we thoroughly loved being out there. It was never a job to us. It was never hard work. And that's why, again, I feel like we're experiencing, you know, a great deal of momentum, uh, you know, people calling it kind of a, a, another boom period within the wrestling business. And I, and, I, and, I, and I believe that's the case, and I certainly hope that it is, but it's, it all derives from two guys that are just really – been fans of us since they were kids and, and and want everybody to enjoy it like we do. And we love, again, the creative process. We love bringing the storylines. We love trying to, again, surprise you, trying to give you those moments that you thought maybe you wouldn't see or these historic things that maybe never took place and somehow trying to come up with something that you haven't seen as a wrestling fan. And, and, and we're having the opportunity to do that. Um, I don't know. And for us, I, I hate to say that it's just fun to do, but it is. And 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 the result of that, I think, is is what we're enjoying right now. And when every when everything is as genuine as it is, I don't know. It makes everything just perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And I got to tell you, it, this period of wrestling has been so exciting for me as a fan. It takes me back to when I was a kid. You know, seeing you at the showboat. Back in the back in the day, and to see this all coming up now, and watching you doing what you're doing with NXT, it is something else. And I can't wait to just you know hop in my car and drive down the street and see what happens down here at 
NXT Battleground at the Apex Center, the UFC. Man, this is going to be an awesome night, and I can't wait. It is. Looking forward to it. It's it's it's, it's been a long it's a been a long haul since the old Showboat days. Um, but at, what you know, honored to be a part of it. Uh, you know, humbled to to be you know sitting in the in the position that I am now and where I'm at. And I can't tell you again from a very genuine place. Sincerely looking forward to coming back to Las Vegas and showing you know our, our fans again how much we appreciate them and giving back to this uh, industry and allowing the young men and women of NXT to show you that they are the future superstars of Raw and SmackDown. And you better see them now because, again, in a short amount of time, they're going to be headlining WrestleManias, uh, you know, much like the one we're getting in Las Vegas next year. And we appreciate it. Sean, thank you very much for the time. We appreciate it. Ticks are still available, you guys, at, at Access, so get them now. There's not many left, and we will see you very soon, Sean. Thanks for the time coming on the Mark Oak Show. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. And there you go, everybody. Sean Michaels, how about that? And I got to tell you, you know, we we're talking about going down memory lane, and I couldn't imagine that uh, even just when I started this show that I'd be interviewing Sean Michaels at some point. What an honor. And thank you once again to WWE and Chuck and the team over there. What a thrill. And Hey, next week, maybe you can rub shoulders with Shawn Michaels, too. Go get your tickets right now. They are available uh, at Access, AXS, and you can be a part of this historic card. And, and you know, I'm trying not to overstate it too much, but, man, that match with Roxanne Perez and Jordan Grace, that is a historic match. A historic match when you're crossing promotions over like that. And if you haven't been following on X as well, a lot of back and forth going on between WWE wrestlers and TNA wrestlers now. You know, Moose and Drew McIntyre, back in the day, they hooked it up in TNA. And, you know, they're, they're talking about going doing it again. Moose wants another you know, go around with them. And, you know, there's some interesting possibilities with that. And if you... uh you know, if you're kind of looking at that relationship a little bit, there's rumor going around that you're going to see some WWE NXT talents at TNA against all odds and Slammiversary. So this relationship is going to continue, and it's going to be very fascinating to see what exactly is happening. Now, I know there's some people out there that are kind of saying, well, why is this happening? Is it good or bad? Is this, is there's something going on with TNA. Well, who knows? But for now, let's just enjoy it. You know, the, the doomsayers out there that say, well, you know, this, you know, is WWE taking over TNA and, you know, don't worry about it for the moment. Just kick back, enjoy the show. Because I know a lot of when you're a pro wrestling fan and you get on the internet, a lot of times there's a ton of negative stuff out there. And yeah, we can, we can delve into those things. And I know, you know, sometimes we're going to be, you know, we're going to be talking about a few things going on with AEW and things like, and that are coming up and, you know, talking about some of the good and bad coming out of double or nothing. And there was a lot of great things that did come out of it. Um, there's one issue that I'm going to bring up that I, in a roundabout way, brought up Tony Khan and the scrum. But for now, just sit back and say, this is cool. Because that's what we talk. You, know, you could you could hear it when we talked to Shawn Michaels. That you know, trying to do things in pro wrestling that are different and exciting and surprising, it's hard. But when you do it, take advantage of it, enjoy it. And we're very very lucky here in Las Vegas that this has become one of the true pro wrestling capitals on this planet. And man, when these opportunities come up, take it. Take it, love it, enjoy it, relish in it, and just have a blast. You know, everywhere from the indies that we have here all the way up to WrestleMania coming up next year, it is awesome. So get some tick, get your tickets. Go down there to the w, uh, the uh, the UFC Apex and enjoy this card. Enjoy this opportunity. Like I said, there's not many tickets left, so get in there, buy up a ticket, get your seats, and and just have a blast like everybody did 
over at AEW Double or Nothing, like you're gonna at WrestleMania and everything else. You know, TNA. I'm sure they're gonna be back here soon, and you know whatever else comes your way. If you're a pro wrestling fan, so many opportunities to see a lot of the greats that are coming in and out of this town. And there's a lot of people that live here too, and a lot of awesome things going on. So enjoy it, man. And I hope you enjoyed that interview with Shawn Michaels. Like I said we didn't, you know, they, they gave us the time we did and uh, tried to take advantage of it as much as we could and got to talk about underground and have a little laugh. So Shawn Michaels too. And I hope you enjoyed that. So there you go. Shawn Michaels, everybody. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to dig into that WWE news a little bit and, you know, talk a little bit about double or nothing too. There's a lot of, rumor and innuendo going around a lot of contracts up for grabs huh like becky lynch for example there's an interesting story for you um and uh saw some comments in the chat box coming in yeah get in that chat box say hi we'll answer your questions as we go stick around we'll be right back One hundred one five fm k don you're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. There you go, everybody. I'm live stream. Give you a little DX chop in honor of the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Once again, thank you, Mr. Michaels, for the time and WWE for allowing Shawn to join us on the show. And once again, get your tickets, guys. What are you waiting for, man? Not many left. Seriously. I said, I just took a look for the show. Not many left for that NXT Battleground show at WWE or uh, WWE Apex. See, they're all jumbled together now. UFC Apex. So hop on in there. I had an interesting question in the chat box before we get into some of the other topics I had. This is, this is kind of a, a fun one here from Jesse Hyde. With Trump being found guilty, let me voice is off today, sorry. Uh, with Trump being found guilty, does that mean it affects his relationship with WWE because he wasn't mentioned in WWE TV since he was president? And now Vince's lawsuit is in trouble with the DOJ. Yeah, what a tangled web we weave, kids. But uh, WWE tries to, has always tried to kind of stay out of politics. They've kept things very general, you know, patriotic themes and so on, tribute to the troops. But they really did try to not get involved with um, with Trump in terms of when he was running for president and so on. So they they kind of left you know left that off to the side. Obviously, Vince, you know, a Republican and had a, a very good relationship with Donald Trump even before all the McMahon's started getting into politics and Trump started getting into politics. Uh, so I would I don't know what they're going to do in terms of mentioning Trump on WWE TV, but given the fact that number one, if you saw what happened last night when Trump was at the UFC uh, event and got a rather rousing ovation, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with it. He, he seems to have actually have his popularity raised a little bit. Considering if you uh, look at some, what happened over there, uh, very loud ovation for the former president. And and that situation with Vince's lawsuit, the Department of Justice is has did ask to have that lawsuit put on hold uh, because they are doing some more investigations on Vince McMahon. So uh, that lawsuit, and let me just pull the story here real quick because I was actually going to get to that a little bit later, but since you guys brought it up, that's what we do here. We respond to our fans. Uh, Janelle Grants uh, has paused her lawsuit against Vince McMahon, WWE, and John Lair. Nice because the DOJ uh, did request that they uh, they want to continue with their own investigation, so they kind of want to hold that thing up. Yeah, that good old Southern District of New York. I I am I am so tired of dealing with the Southern District of New York. <sighs> Man, I'll tell you. I for those that don't know, I used to do a poker radio show where we would talk about poker and then have a ton of different poker personalities on, and they were sticking their nose into poker too and online poker and stuff with the whole Black Friday thing. 
that happened way back when, when they knocked all the poker sites offline. I'm, I'm really sick of those guys. <laughs> they, they tend to do some pretty shisty and shady things in that group, but we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, so they're, they are apparently want to uh, dig in as, so, uh, Janelle Grant's attorney, uh, and Callis issued following statement saying Ms. Grant has consented to a request by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York to stay her case against Mr. McMahon, WWE, and Mr. Larnice pursuant to a non a pending non public investigation. We will cooperate with all appropriate next steps. So apparently DOJ has some more digging they want to do, and they've asked everybody, hey, take a break with yours. We'd like to do our thing. All right. So I don't know. That's that's interesting for Ms. Grant. But boy, there's some there's some interesting stuff going on too. Vince is firing back on that. I don't know. That whole thing is a mess. That is a mess. Cuz that's going to be oh, mm, as bad as that lawsuit sounded. There's got to remember there's another side of that story too. I mean, it sounds terrible and certainly Vince should have never been doing what he's doing, but Hmm. We'll see. We'll see where the truth falls. But yeah. But as for President Trump and WWE, who knows? But I, I think I think WWE, quite frankly, would be very smart to just stay out of that for right now. Now Dana White doesn't care, and UFC fans are, a, you know, certainly a, a group where they are not very politically neutral and they're they're cool with it but you know wwe has typically been the a kind of group where you know it's like just never play politics and and that's a good call and i'm sure and and trust me i would you would imagine that vince would have loved to have played politics you know vince and linda i'm i'm sure are not joe we're not joe biden fans or barack obama fans but you know they stayed out of it so I I could imagine that uh, you know, WWE is going to do the same thing. So there you go. So there you go, Jesse Hyde. Good question. And if any of you have other questions in the chat box, bring them. Let's hear it. Let's hear your comments. You know, love to hear your thoughts on Battleground and everything else too. Um, I guess we'll kind of let's see what else we got going on WWE. But yeah, this is a big story. Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is a officially a free agent. She has not signed a WWE contract. She was apparently was not happy with the number WWE gave her. And boy, I'll tell you, is that stunning? You would have thought that that, that would have been a done deal. Of course, she's married to Seth Rollins. <laughs> I mean, hang around with a hubby, keep rolling, and Seth just re-signed. But apparently she wants to take a hiatus. She wants to kick back and relax for a while. And just, eh, I'm good. Oh, boy. Tony Khan has just got to be sitting around and saying, oh, my God, if I could get Becky Lynch on this roster. Can you imagine the phone calls and texts that are flying back and forth between her and Mercedes Monet right now? Just think about that for a second. And if I'm Tony Khan, and Natty's out there too, by the way. We talked about Natty the last couple of weeks on the show. Natalia. Madam Hart. If I'm Tony Khan, I'm picking up my checkbook. And I'm writing down 000 with a comma in front of those three. 000, comma in front of those three. And I'm saying to Becky, um, Becky, what what number do you want in front of those six zeros? What number? Let's talk. What number do you want there? Because if he would steal her away, this is like, you know, the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles had just signed Saquon Barkley as an example, was a running back for the New York Giants, and the Philadelphia Eagles got him. That is not just they got 
a running a really good running back for their team, but they took a running back away from a division competitor. That would be such a massive signing for them to not only get Becky Lynch on the roster, but take her from WWE. And it's interesting that WWE, you know, did they undervalue her? Or did they think that, you know, well, you know, the hubby's here, you know, and we've got a lot of women here already. I mean, they didn't, they didn't throw the number that Mercedes wanted. And she said, no. Boy, could you, I mean, could you imagine Becky Lynch performing at all in? Oh my God. Yeah, she's Irish. That would be entertaining. You'd have to imagine the temptation would be there. I mean, there are other couples that have one in WWE and one in AEW. But God, the, the temptation has to be there. I mean, like I said, I can't, I can't imagine that Tony would not be willing to throw out whatever number she wanted within, within reason. I mean, he's not going to pay her, you know, a, a $20 million contract or anything like that, but it's, it's, it's got to be something, something pretty hefty. And I'd bring Natty too. I'd bring them both in there. Could you imagine if they both showed up? What a boost. And especially with these contract negotiations going on, and apparently, you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit later too. That they've they've up their Warner Brothers Discovery is up their number, considering they just screwed up the negotiations with the NBA. What a what a perfect storm for her, man! If I'm Becky, I mean, I don't know if I leave. I mean, that would be tough, but you'd have to think about it. You'd have to. I don't know, Tony. I don't know. Break the bank, brother. Break the bank and see what happens. I I would think that would be a worthwhile investment. All right. We're going to head into our break for the hour. And when we come back, our good friend from Austin, Texas, Stu Meyer, is going to be joining us. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> And Jesse Hyde just hit me right at the break there, too. Hey, we'll get into it, man. We're going to be talking a lot of AEW and breaking down that double or nothing card that just happened right here in Las Vegas. If you guys went to the hospital, I don't know which one, but it was a pretty nasty night here in Las Vegas. But was it too nasty? That's what we're going to be talking about. One thing I'm bringing up. Why I asked the question I did to Tony Khan. Huh? Well, see, I'm always thinking, guys. Stick around, everybody. We've got a whole lot more on the Mark Hoke Show coming up here. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on KDON. 1015 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. We will be right back. Stu Myrick and a whole lot more. Stick around, everybody. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today and thanks for listening. 